What's going on guys? It is Austin with Common 60. Today we are going to be talking about Uconnect and Sync. So I had a Uconnect system in my 2019 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. I have a Sync 3 system in my 2020 Ford Mustang Bullet. I want to cover the differences, the specs, and ultimately share with you guys my thoughts on which system is better. So I realize that a lot of you aren't buying these cars because of the infotainment options and the screen size, but they are nice to have if you are daily driving these cars, going on a road trip, and it's good to know what features you have available and what that looks like. So let's jump into the differences and hopefully this can help paint a great picture for you guys of how these two systems really don't compare and how they're both vastly different. So as we're jumping into the differences, I am comparing my 2019 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack Uconnect system versus my 2020 Ford Mustang Bullet Sync 3 system. So depending on the models that you guys get in each one of these cars, the screen sizes as well as options within the screens might be different. As well as by the time you're viewing this video, some of the things might change. Obviously there's different software updates that can happen. So let's quickly jump into the sizes of screens because size matters. So the Dodge Challenger Uconnect system that I had was 8.4. Fast forwarding to my Ford Mustang Bullet, it is eight. The differences seem not that big, but the Uconnect system, in my opinion, seems so much bigger. And I think the main reason for that is because on the Dodge Challenger, it really is more driver focused. It's kind of tilted and kind of focused more towards the driver, whereas the Sync 3 just kind of is embedded down and it's just kind of straight. It's kind of forward facing. It doesn't lean one way or the other. And for that reason alone, and based on how it's framed in, the, the Challenger, obviously it is bigger on size, but it just seems quite a bit bigger when you are comparing the sizes of the two. One thing that is nice about both cars and both systems is they do come with Apple and Android CarPlay. You do need to plug them in, but still makes it very nice, very easy to use. All right, so let's talk about the Uconnect system in the Challenger. And I'm gonna cover a lot of different features and a lot of things that I really like, but I really wanna get into the main thing that I think sets the Uconnect system just on an entirely different level. And that's really the customization of the Uconnect system. What is so cool with that screen, obviously both, both systems, the Sync 3 and the Uconnect are touchscreen, but with the Uconnect, you can drag and drop and move your icons all over the screen. It makes it very easy to do. So it just makes it very customizable for you as you're daily driving or just driving this car on, you know, occasionally on the weekends or maybe in nice weather. So the customization of the Dodge is just on another level. You can move the apps, the icons around, the background screens is something very cool and very unique. They've included multiple, I think there's 10 plus options for backgrounds that you guys can go through. You know, you can change it to a Hellcat, you can change it to the car of the Challenger. There are so many cool backdrops that just aren't your standard backdrops, right? They, they, they have images of the car, there's Dodge branding. You can change kind of the look and feel of the system and how kind of the buttons look. And that just is another thing that makes it really unique. Another thing on the Uconnect system that is just on another level is the performance pages. So within the performance pages, you can track all of your zero to 60 times, quarter mile times, there are more things in there to track than probably what you will care to look at on a daily basis. But you can manage and see what your dyno looks like on the car, how many Gs it's pulling. You can see all of your intake, your air temperatures, your coolant temperatures, the horsepower you're putting down. I mean, it is crazy. The performance pages are phenomenal and they do an awesome job. One downside with the Uconnect system and the performance pages is it isn't the fastest to respond. A lot of times when I had my Challenger, my performance pages would crash and I wouldn't be able to use them or they would take forever to get to. But if you are interested in that, if you do like that, it is amazing on the Uconnect system and definitely worth it. You can also change your drive modes within the Uconnect system. And with the Mustang, the toggle switches are just down 
below and you can just switch them from there. So with the Dodge, not only does it have a button where you can change your drive modes, but you can also get into your drive modes on the Uconnect system. So really it's one place to kind of go for everything. Now, as we get into the Sync 3 system, it really is a lot more basic. Now, you can change a lot of the stuff. You know, there's there's obviously all these different apps and things you can get into. You know, if you get into your display, you can change your background. And you can just see here, oh, I can go with maybe black, or maybe I can go with this blue that's a little bit textured. So really not that customizable. Um, I do have it in night mode, so you can go to day mode and make it a lot brighter. So that is kind of unique and neat. But these backgrounds are just plain Jane. Um, that you would see on an old computer, you know, back in the day for your background to change. So when it comes to that and comparing it to the Dodge, it's it's really different. Like I said, I have mine in night mode. Um, really not a lot of other stuff to really go over. Both options do come with valet mode, which is really nice, a feature that I think more people should use. But really, you know, just nothing too crazy. All of these systems have the same thing, turning off your beeps, how it measures, um, nothing too crazy. Obviously my car has navigation, both systems had it. Didn't really notice a difference between the two because I really don't use navigation. But that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's really basic, it's really simple, and that might work for a lot of people. Now something you will notice is comparing the Uconnect versus the Sync, here in the sync, you can't access any of your drive modes. You can't access any of your zero to 60 timers, quarter mile timers, performance of the car. Uh, where you would do that is actually over here on the center console of where you're driving on the odometer. So there's a lot of buttons down here that you can change your colors, change your screen. Obviously, you know, I love the digital gauge on the Ford, uh, but you can access your zero to 60 timers and all of your timers through here. But what I've found in using both of these is it's a little bit clunky to try and navigate between the two because with the Challenger, although you will use some of the options on your steering wheel for zero to 60 and other things, it just makes it so much easier of how they've designed the Uconnect system. And I felt they designed the Uconnect system with the driver in mind and performance in mind. But it still doesn't mean that you can't access some of those things, but you access it over here. Another difference that I noticed with Sync compared to Uconnect is the ability within general on the Uconnect is to really change a lot of different things. On the Uconnect, I could change how long it took for my lights to come off on my car. I could change different lock settings and how I could access the car. It's maybe on here in the sink. However, I have not been able to find it. Maybe it's under vehicle, but really with, with um, yeah, like onboard serial number. Why do I need that? Camera settings. Okay, great. So I just have found that it really is just two vastly different systems. And on the final point, the thing that is important to me is how fast these systems connect to my phone. I actually don't like plugging in my phone. I just don't like cords. I don't like wires. I'm, it's just my personal preference. But I will say this, the Sync does connect uh, wirelessly via Bluetooth to my phone way faster than the Uconnect system does. Within the Sync 3, by the time I am almost out of my garage, my song is already on and it's playing or whatever I was listening to. With um, the Uconnect system, I would be all the way backed out of my driveway, which it's not a long driveway by any means, but I would say it's probably a good 10 seconds slower than what the Ford does. And that is something that I do like about the Sync. So, you know, I, I don't think we're buying these cars because of these two systems. However, if you do care about this stuff or don't, with the Ford, you can still get to a lot of the stuff that the Dodge does. However, they're just in different places. It's a little bit different setup. But if you really don't care about that, if you just care about just sheer driving the car and not worrying about with all those gadgets or the tech, then the Sync will be great for you. However, once you have the Uconnect system, I just think, in my opinion, it is a vastly superior system in so many ways. Guys, I'm Awesome with Gone in 60. Thank you for watching today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next video.